Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar, Rise for Life Sciences. Today, we'll talk about the 3D printing requirements in life sciences and additive manufacturing technology needed to meet those requirements. Our presenter today will be Andy Berlin, Product Manager at Rise. And now, I'll turn things over to Andy. Thanks, Julie. Life sciences represents a market in which 3D printing has become a valuable tool in a lot of applications. There are so many 3D printing technologies and vendors that finding the right technology partner is not always straightforward. To identify the right technology, you really need to understand the unique needs of your application to find a printing system that matches those needs. In this webinar, we'll take a look at some typical life sciences applications parse them to figure out what properties are important to consider, and then compare some different solutions to see how well systems like the RISE platform fit in. So let me introduce you to RISE and what we're about. We're a next generation additive manufacturing company based in the Boston area. Our team is comprised of industry pioneers in the areas of 3D printing, CAD, and enterprise software. And we've developed and put on the market the first hybrid 3D printer based on a patented process called augmented polymer deposition that combines material extrusion and material jetting in a single printer. So one of the main drivers that makes additive manufacturing valuable in the life sciences industry is its ability to easily make parts that are matched to specific patients. That is, the parts are unique to each patient and are usually derived from scan data taken from the patient. And another strength for additive in this market is the ability to print complex geometries, organic shapes that would be difficult or impossible using traditional manufacturing methods. And as is true in other markets, additive is a valuable tool for iterative design because of the rapid turnaround for parts. So these drivers have led to the use of additive in drug discovery in the pharma industry, pre-surgery planning, orthopedic support, such as braces, casts, and prosthetics, dental thermoforming, and teaching tools. There are both preclinical and clinical applications represented here. These are all good applications because they share some common market needs, which are well addressed by a polymer-based additive manufacturing platform. There are non-polymer-based additive technologies that lend themselves well to some very specific applications, such as printing biomaterials, making permanent medical implants, and manufacturing specialized surgical instruments. These kinds of applications generally require very specialized additive manufacturing equipment or parts with very specific material properties. We'll focus on the more generalized market needs ap applicable to polymer-based systems. So what are those market needs? Well, one is durability. The need for durable parts spans multiple industries. 3D printing has matured and moved from just appearance modeling into more functional use cases, where end-use parts with functional properties are much more in demand. For life sciences, durability implies low water absorption, so parts don't swell and change properties over time. Durability implies chemical resistance, so the parts don't react with other substances commonly used in life science applications, such as alcohols. And durability implies strength, so parts survive their intended end-use application without breaking. Security is another key market requirement. Confidentiality, such as patient confidentiality, is a component of security. And in addition, and importantly, traceability is a component of security. Traceable parts contain an immutable link between the part and the model that generated it. With traceability, you can positively associate and immutably link the part with the data. For patient scan data, you can link the scan data to the part. This is especially important when parts may resemble each other, such as a tray of dental models, or parts go through multiple revisions, or it's critical to ensure that a part is for a certain patient. The term Digital twin describes the relationship between a part and the online data that was used to generate the part. When parts include tracing information, the digital twin is always readily accessible and guaranteed to be accurate. And certainly, not least of all, 
cleanliness and safety of both the material and the printing process are critical in the life sciences industry. And we'll talk more about that in a second. First, I wanna mention biocompatibility. That's an ambiguous term, but with respect to 3D printing and life sciences, it generally relates to the toxicity of the 3D printed part. Biocompatibility is not some quantitative measure of the safety of the material. So you can't really compare materials based on claims of biocompatibility. You really have to consider biocompatibility in specific applications. For instance, you could say a material has been tested for biocompatibility for a certain application, which depends on things like how long will the part be exposed to human tissue and the tissue to which it is exposed. We don't make claims of biocompatibility. It's up to the end user to ensure the part is tested for its intended application and RISE will assist any customer who wants to attain a biocompatibility certification. There are, however, some quantitative measurements of material safety, namely USPNF classification of plastics and ISO 10993. The USPNF, or United States Pharmacopeia, combined with the national formulary, has an often used classification system for plastics in pharma and medical applications. The system defines six classes of plastics and the tests that are performed to determine a classification. Without going into detail, you can see that class six is the most stringent because all nine tests have to be performed. When designing Rhizium 1, the polymer used on the Rise platform, for instance, we chose components that all passed class six testing. It is important to note, however, that the Rhizium 1 compound hasn't undergone testing itself. An overlooked consideration is the cleanliness and safety of the entire process, not just the part. Some things to consider are, can the printer be used in an office environment or does it require lab space? Will venting be required because of VOC emission? Is there a post-processing step that requires additional equipment, waste management, protective gear, or trained labor? Are there any other facilities requirements? These questions become pertinent as hospitals and clinics move away from using external service bureaus to purchasing their own 3D printers for in-house use, which is more and more feasible as the price of industrial 3D printing has dropped. Service bureaus will have the infrastructure to run and support printers that belong in a lab, Hospitals and clinics, on the other hand, don't want to dedicate space and personnel to support a 3D printer, which makes these process considerations more important. Sterilization is another category that can be used to identify appropriate materials for life sciences. There are three common sterilization techniques, heat-based, chemical or wet sterilization, and radiation. Each is applicable in different situations. If your facility has a steam autoclave, then you may want to choose materials that are autoclavable, which means they can run at temperatures around 120 to 130 degrees C, won't rust, and don't include powders. Dry heat sterilization requires materials that can withstand temperatures from around 150 to 170 degrees C for hours at a time without deforming, which usually limits you to the very high-end engineering plastic. For heat sensitive plastics, there's chemical sterilization using gas or liquids like ETO, lutealdehyde, ozone, and others. And finally, there are radiation sterilization techniques which work with almost any material. We've covered some of the market needs. I wanna interject here to describe the RISE printing platform. This system is unique in that it employs a patented hybrid process called augmented polymer deposition or APD. APD involves the simultaneous extrusion of our own compound of medical grade thermoplastic and jetting of special inks. It works this way. First, a thermoplastic is extruded, forming the support. Next, release ink is jetted between the support and the first layer of part. Then thermoplastic is extruded, forming the part layers. And then as the part is built up layer by layer, Special inks are jetted between the layers of thermoplastic to change the polymer properties on a voxel level. There are unique advantages to this process. First, 
Jetting the release agent between the support structures and part enables very simple post-processing. The part can be peeled away from the support structures without chemicals, without additional equipment, very quickly leaving a smooth surface finish. Secondly, the marking inks let you apply text and graphics to the part for identification, tracing information, usage instructions, or safety information. This marking capability adds a whole new dimension of functionality to the part. And in developing a polymer to complement the process, we design a material that provides isotropic strength, so you don't have to design your part to compensate for weak interlayer bonding. And on safety, we used medical grade components that don't leach, contaminate, or emit VOCs during the print process. So this video demonstrates the value of security and traceability. The part is printed with a 2D barcode applied to it. The code is a signature that links the part to all its metadata, which you can access immediately by using a handheld scanner or even your smartphone. For instance, it can pull up a patient ID, info about the scan data from which the part was built, and data about the print process itself. This 2D barcode, the signature, is the immutable link between the physical part and its digital twin. Here's a chart that compares commonly used 3D printing materials against the properties we just talked about and some other ones that are important to life science applications. The first few rows speak to the safety and cleanliness of the material, the USP Class 6 certification of the components, the chemical resistance to ketones, alcohols, and acids, its low leaching nature, the residual metals content, the low surface energy, the compatibility with certain sterilization techniques, and the VOC emissions, or lack thereof, during the printing process. The next two rows relate to the need for durability, the interlayer or Z-axis strength of a part, and the low water absorption for long-term stability. The next row relates to an interesting life sciences application, making silicone and urethane molds and how a material with a low surface energy is well suited for mold making. The next row is about security or the ability to create an immutable link on the part to patient records, revision numbers and such. Support removal and the ability to print complex geometries are directly related to post-processing techniques. Then there's a relative comparison of the cost of ownership, considering both capital and operational costs. And finally, a comparison of the color of the material, which is important to the life sciences industry to convey cleanliness. Here's a case study from one of our customers. And I chose this one because their application is fairly unique and speaks to the variety of things you can do with our system. ConMed is a medical device manufacturer with a large R&D facility. Here, they printed a part to overmold silicone. Rhizium is great for molding applications because of its low surface energy, meaning you don't need a mold release agent. And you can see they use the marking ink capability to ID and date stamp the parts. They use their printer to make parts for both preclinical and clinical applications. I wanted to wrap this up by quickly summarizing the advantages of the RISE system. We didn't dive deeply into the ROI advantages of RISE, but generally, we stack up favorably against other industrial 3D printing solutions, providing the lowest cost of ownership, both for acquisition and operationally, enabled primarily by the ease of use and near zero post-processing. There are our core technical differentiators, a strong interlayer bond, which leads to isotropic strength, and the marking ink capability, which enables security and traceability. Our desktop approach, which allows the printer to be used by anyone in a typical office environment. And finally, our platform approach, which enables industry 4.0 applications, digitally augmented parts, and an ecosystem of strategic partnerships. Thanks for listening. If you want more information or want to discuss anything we just went over, please reach out to us at info at rise3d.com and we'll see what we can do for you. Thanks again.